Hello, Blake Rudis here with F64 Academy and F64 Elite. And today I'm gonna to talk to you about advanced blending in three different programs. And I really don't wanna to touch on any one topic as to why this is so important, one versus the other. But what I wanna show you is just how you can do advanced blending in three different programs in three extremely different ways, actually. The first one being Photoshop with Blendif, as you've seen me use many times. And the second being an on one photo raw using the advanced blending option that you have with apply to and your protection measures and infinity photo where you have advanced blend options on a curve or a linear pattern all three are very different but very much powerful in their own right so let's jump in and i'll show you how to use each one of them So this tutorial is really just gonna give you an insight as to how to do some advanced blending in various different programs. So as you know, I do a lot of Blendif tutorials. I even have my own playlist on my YouTube channel specifically for Blendif tutorials because I do so many things with this concept of Blendif because I think it's just fantastic. But when people see these things, they say, well, that's really cool that you can do that in Photoshop, but how do you do that in On One Photo Raw? Or how do you do that in Affinity Photo? Or how do you do that in this program? And some programs or plugins, you just can't do it in because it doesn't have that protection measure or those advanced blendings. But Photoshop, On One Photo Raw, and Affinity all have their own ways of doing blend if. So maybe I don't talk about the program or plugin that you have, but maybe the program or plugin that you have may look something like one of these three, because even though the name changes from blend if to protection to blending options to advanced blend modes, really what, what it is, it's all the same. It's a way to protect a certain area of your image from something else. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you in Photoshop that we're gonna hop into On One Photo Raw and then Affinity Photo. So I'm gonna make a new layer here and I'm gonna press Shift F5 and just fill that with a color. I'm just gonna select a magenta color here so we have a nice bold magenta color on top of this. So what we have here is because we have a layer stack, we have the background layer, which is our individual zones from black to white, zero through 10. And then on top of that, we have a magenta layer. So if we double click right in here, or if we right click and say blending options, this is gonna open up our layer styles. And what I wanna to talk to you about is this thing called blend if, which is right down here. So we've seen this many times before. The top layer here, which says this layer, this top portion of blend if deals with this magenta layer. But what's underneath it, this one right here, this is protecting anything in your underlying image or the image composition as a whole, the tones from what's going on above it. So if we have this magenta layer here and we don't want zone zero to be affected, we move this over, we press alt or option right here and we can just feather that on nice and neatly on over. So you'll notice that in Photoshop, we can protect certain areas from our image by moving a slider, pressing alt or option to feather it to, to make a varying degree of a selection. So now anywhere you see magenta down here, that's what area of my photo will be affected. So this is telling me that my zone five or my midtones are gonna be affected. This is telling me that my whites in my image below this magenta layer will not get anything done to them. And this is telling me that anything underneath my image that's black or moving its way into middle gray will not be affected. Again, you can alter option to split and feather that. And that's a protection measure. And a lot of times people say, well, what would you use this for? Well, I'd use it for color grading to make sure that a color only affects a specific area of my image. Maybe I don't want it to affect my highlights, so I block out the highlights from that color grade. I might use it for sharpening so that only my midtones get the sharpen. And I might even use it for noise reduction so that only my shadows get that effect instead of the whole image. So here we are in Photo Raw. We've got our same zone chart opened up here. I'm going to hop in on over to Effects. Now you'll find this not only in any layer that you create in Effects in On One Photo Raw, but you'll also find it in the local adjustments when you make a local adjustment on your image, which makes dodging and burning in On One Photo Raw absolutely phenomenal. But let's talk about this in On One Photo Raw. So I'm going to add a filter, and that filter I'm going to add is going to be a split tone filter. And for the sake of this, I'm just gonna change this to normal, and I'm gonna change these colors to this bright pink magenta-y color that I have here. And all I'm really doing here is nothing crazy, just setting myself up with a straight magenta color on my image. 
So where you'll find these protection settings is anywhere you see a gear icon right here, that's going to open up some advanced blending options. So we can protect our highlights by moving this slider over. So now we're saying that this magenta layer will not affect anything, zones um, 10 and then into zone 9, uh, and shadows, we're protecting our shadows. But there's also another thing right here that's really awesome where you can say, okay, apply this only to my highlights, only to my shadows, or only to my midtones, which is very much the same as what you do with blend if we just do it in a different way. So if I move this over, you can see how the range as the range gets bigger for those midtones, it's allowing this magenta layer to affect our image underneath accordingly. So if we bring this all the way down, we don't have anything. As we move it over, it starts to increase that feather like you saw when we pressed alter option to split and feather the range in Photoshop. So they're, they're slightly different. This one uses sliders that have very specific names to it. Whereas with Photoshop, you have to kind of know what you're doing there. Now we're going to jump into affinity because they also have some blending modes in there that are really powerful when it comes to uh, making these protection measures here, but it's in a totally different way than you've seen in Photoshop photo raw. And now what you're going to see in affinity photo, we have our zone chart here already laid out for us. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a new layer here. And the hotkeys for this are just like Photoshop. If I press Shift F5, I can change whatever color I want to fill this with. And I like to fill this with magenta because really magenta is a color that we typically don't see in our images uh, because it, it, it's just not there that often. There's not many things in the world that are that bright magenta. So we're going to press Apply. And here you're not going to see, if we double click here, it's not going to open up like it does in Photoshop. Um, there's no highlights, sliders, or anything. But what we do have is we have a gear right here that says blend ranges. If we open up blend ranges, we now have this ability, just like in Photoshop, where you source the actual layer that you're selecting or use the underlying layers as the source for the protection. And here's usually the stumbling point here with Affinity. I know when I first opened it up, I was like, okay, that's great. What the heck is this? Well, you either have a linear adjustment here or a curve adjustment here. So if I bring this one down right here, this is saying that the underlying layers darks are going to show through. If I bring this one down on the other side, it's going to say that this underlying layers highlights are not going to be affected by this magenta, but the magenta will rest itself anywhere from zone zero through zone nine. And you see, it's got a very slight effect on each one of these. Well, that's where the point comes in with this linear. So if you move this down to here, you can then add another point and move this down to say here and make your selection um, a lot more finite in, in, its, in what it's actually selecting. Now, if you wanted to do, do the midtones, if you grab the middle and make a point, pull this down, you're now protecting the underlying layers midtones from what's happening with this purple or magenta layer on top. And then if you were to make your points accordingly, you're now saying that this is only going to affect my uh, lightest lights, which would be my, my, my brightest brights in the image or zone 10, or my darkest darks, which would be my, my blacks or my zone zeros. Now, that's when you do it with the point. But notice how you can also do things pretty interestingly here where you're saying, okay, well, uh, do it to my midtones, do it to my highlights, and do it to my shadows, but protect all those zones in between. Now, this would be some really uh, intricate uh, an advanced blending here at this point, because most of the time you probably wouldn't do something like this anyway. We're typically trying to protect our highlights, our midtones, or our shadows, but rarely do we get to a point where we're saying, okay, well, only zone seven and a little bit of zone three are gonna be affected by this exact same thing. But if you wanted to, that's a way that you could do it. And then if we go in here, we unclick linear, we can now change this to a curve and it's almost what you're used to with the curve where things are less strict and finite by their uh, linear base and they have more of a curve which gives you more of a uh, transition into those uh, midtones and those shadow areas. So this would be protecting our midtones from everything. But then if you brought these down on the left hand side and the right hand side, you're now applying that 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 magenta layer to only the midtones. And you can also make a, other points in here in between so that you can get pretty finite with that adjustment as well so that you uh, make sure that certain areas of your image are not being affected. So you, in, in this way, the way we work in Photoshop, where we have one slider that really is the master for your highlights, your midtones and your shadows, and the feathering is based off of how you split it with alter option. And then we have on one photo raw where everything is pretty much uh, written based text based 
only affect the midtones, only affect the highlights, or protect the highlights, protect the midtones, which is really a much more straightforward way of doing advanced blending because you're saying, hey, protect my highlights, just like you would if you were in the front end of developing and manipulating highlights. And then we get into Affinity Photo, which actually creates unlimited possibilities here with the blending options. Now, does it necessarily mean that one of them is better than the rest? Absolutely not. It just means that there's many different ways that you can do these advanced selections. So if you see me using Blendif in Photoshop, because that's typically where you'll find me, if you see me using Blendif, you can do the same thing in On One Photo Raw and the same thing in Affinity Photo. You just have to look for it in a different spot. So if you like this tutorial, please like it, comment on it, share it, tell a friend. And if you haven't done so already, please, please, please subscribe because I've got new tutorials. I try to push them out every Friday if I possibly can. Sometimes things get in the way like sick children last night. <laughs> so uh, I really do just appreciate you uh, enjoying these tutorials and further expanding on your knowledge of post-processing. Have a great day. Mm -hmm.